Okay, I have the same setup as before. The meter, the 12 volt battery. You can see that the meter just goes up here to the capacitors. Uh, I'm using the cloud coil off of the SEC exciter. One wire, one wire feeding the L3 coil. And I have six ferrets here. I've connected two threes together. And basically the same thing up here. We've got the little AV plug with the LED and, of course, the meter across it. So let me pause this for a second, start the exciter, and I think you'll like what you see. Okay, I have the SEC exciter running. And here's the charge rate of 6 farads. Not quite as fast as 3, but pretty acceptable. My battery, that's yeah, down about 2.3, 2.3 tenths of a volt. You can barely see the little LED, so there's not a whole lot of RF energy up here right now with these two large capacitors on it. And, of course, it'll work the same way as the first tape. We can put a light bulb across it, uh, get it to light that light. Now, of course, it should stay on twice as long, right? Or near that. And you can see that as the capacitors charge, they don't slow up. They don't reach that normal curve. We're pretty much into a linear state here. Okay, now I'm going to take and pause again. I want to show you something. Okay, a couple of people have asked what this coil really is. And so I've drawn it up, not completely, and I'll tell you exactly why. I don't like attempted replications that fail. So I'm holding back on a couple of things here on the coil that will allow a replication until I get done showing most of what's going on. But you can see here that the the coil has one winding, but it's split up in clockwise, counterclockwise windings. And the uh, number of coils I haven't shown, I just showed a split mark. The helix winding on the outside uh, which is the input, which is the output, that doesn't make a difference. And I showed the aluminum rod going through it. So anyway, uh, there's the best I'll give you at this point in time, because, like I say, one thing I really disagree with is replications that don't succeed. So I'm not going to allow replications based on my cloud coil at this time. We'll bring that up a little later. I'm still looking at trying to get the light circuit done, but uh, it's going to be, it was 108 yesterday, a little bit more than I can stand, and today it looks like it's going to be close to the same thing. So anyway, there's your schematic. Now there's something else that I'll show you. Here's the, let me get this. Here's the spectrum analyzer of what's happening right now. The left hand side, of course, is what the SEC 18 and the cloud coil are generating. I'm going to show you one more thing before I quit this tape. There's only about five people in the world that have seen this, and because of my health, I've decided I'm going to show it. Uh, the mathematicians out there, I have a real close friend that's a mathematician. He said, this is hokey, it don't work. I told him it does work, Empiric empirical evidence proves it. So I'm going to show you a formula that shows, when you use the formula properly, it will show you the 
frequencies at which the lattice will vibrate and return energy. Okay, there's your formula. Not a big deal. And the world has now seen it. So, it's quite simple. You take a calculator, you can work it out in just a matter of seconds. And if you've got a spreadsheet on your computer, put it in a spreadsheet and you can calculate all the frequencies immediately. So anyway, that's it for this tape. Uh, we're now down at... Uh, We've now reached 7, 7.54 volts on 6 farads of capacity.